It's been over 16 years since Avatar The Last Airbender graced our TV screens, and I'm over here like... It's been... 84 years. This wildly popular and critically acclaimed animated series has made the leap to live action, and no, we don't talk about the 2010 version. That wasn't a good movie. I'll say. No kidding. Horrible. You said it. But the effects were decent. In this video, we'll be going over the entire season, its ending, and some comparisons to the show. Note, there won't be any spoilers beyond this season. But before we begin, make sure to grab your cabbages and bend that like and subscribe button, and leave a comment below of what you thought of the season. My cabbages! It's really interesting that the very first and last shot of the season are of the Sozin Comet, named after Fire Lord Sozin who started the Fire Nation's conquest over a hundred years ago. It's not really explained in the show, but the closer this comet comes to Earth, the greater firebenders are able to harness its energy, making its presence the perfect time to launch an attack. This is why we see the Fire Nation attack the Air Nomads, annihilating all of them but one, Aang the Avatar or Last Airbender. It's Brother Gyatso who teaches us that the world lives in a delicate balance between four elements. The Water Tribe, Air Nomads, Earth Kingdom, and Fire Nation, and it's the job of the Avatar to ensure ensure peace between them. The Avatar is the only one endowed with the ability to control all four elements in a process called bending, allowing him or her to manipulate these elements as he or she sees fit. Aang comes from a long line of Avatars who, upon death, are reincarnated to keep the peace. When one Avatar dies, their spirit is reborn into a new body in an eternal cycle. Before Aang was Avatar Roku of the Fire Nation, then Kyoshi of Earth and Kurik of the Water Tribe, all of them joining in this cycle. But when Aang is knocked into the sea and frozen for a hundred years, no one is around to maintain this delicate balance. This allows the Fire Nation to continue its conquest unimpeded so that when Aang awakens the world is a markedly different place than when he left it. The Air Nomads are completely wiped out, and both the earth and water tribes are on their last ropes. If balance is to be restored, Aang must complete his training and master the four elements. Complete my training and master all the other bending skills so I can bring balance back to the world. This is where we begin the season's final episode. Aang's journey has brought him to Agna Kela, the home of the Northern Water Tribe. Aang had seen a grave vision from Avatar Kyoshi of this city being destroyed by the Fire Nation, so he comes to thwart this attack, even though his training is not yet complete. Along with him on his journey are his friends Sokka and Katara. Katara lives with the pain of her dead mother, a mother who sacrificed herself so she could live. It's this pain that holds her back from realizing her true potential as a waterbender and becoming a master. We don't have to be afraid of our pain. We just need to decide what we're going to do with it. Sokka has his own pain to deal with, believing that he's not good enough to be a warrior. He overheard his father who doubted him, not believing he has what it takes to lead. But it's brother Gaiatso who, once again, shares his wisdom on what it means to deal with pain. We must let go of our pain and regret and remember what it is we're really fighting for, the ones we love. And ultimately, that's what Aang is fighting for. In the final episode, he'll make the painful decision of sacrificing himself to save those he loves. But more on that in a bit. As the final episode begins, Aang and the gang realize just what they're up against. The Fire Nation brought hundreds of ships and an armada that lays siege to the city. The armada is under the command of Admiral Zhao, who, after clever political maneuvering, has taken over the navy in search for the Avatar. Capturing the Avatar is of the utmost importance to the Fire Nation. The Avatar is the only person that can stop them, so if he's imprisoned, nothing can get in their way of global domination. At one point in the season, Aang is captured and even told that killing him would be a waste. That's because if he dies, he'll just get reincarnated again. So why not keep him imprisoned to live out the rest of his days while the Fire Nation takes over the world? While Zhao does express wanting to capture the Avatar, he secretly has other plans. He wants to overthrow Fire Lord Ozai and become the Fire Lord himself. This 
won't fly with the Fire Lord's son, Prince Zuko, who three years ago was banished from the Fire Nation and only allowed back on the condition that he retrieved the Avatar. Zuko is next in line to the throne, but if he fails to catch the Avatar, this will never happen, thus he is obsessed with capturing him and will stop at nothing to do so. The prince has a, let's just say, complicated relationship with his father. As punishment for challenging his war plans, Fire Lord Ozai challenges his son to Agni Kai, a traditional firebender duel where the first one to burn the other opponent wins. At one point, Zuko gains the upper hand and has the ability to end it, but doesn't out of compassion. He doesn't want to hurt his dad. This proves to be a grave error as his father sees compassion as weakness. Compassion is a sign of weakness. Thus, Ozai burns his son's face and banishes him on a fool's errand in search of the Avatar, who many believe has abandoned the Earth after not being seen in over a hundred years. The Avatar's re-emergence is what gives Zuko hope. If he can capture him, he will gain his father's acceptance, prove that he's not weak, and take his role as rightful heir to the throne. But as the prince's Uncle Iroh notes, Sometimes hope can be a cruel thing. Iroh, the Fire Lord's older brother and once great general, accompanies Zuko on his journey, most likely because he lost his own son, Lu Ten, in the 600-day siege of Ba Sing Se, the Fire Nation's unsuccessful attack on the Earth Kingdom's capital. With the death of his son, Iroh abandoned the siege and returned home dishonored, only to find his father had passed away under mysterious circumstances, with Ozai stating that the Fire Lord's final words were that the throne pass Iroh and go to Ozai, even though he was the younger brother. Iroh was already a broken man and did not contest the secession. But Zuko and Zhao aren't the only ones fighting for this throne. There's Zuko's younger sister, Azula. Throughout the season, she attempts to prove to her father that she's ready to go out into the world and show that she has what it takes to lead. But it seems no matter what she does, she can never gain his approval. You're perfect. It's not gonna lose. The seemingly impenetrable walls of Agna Kalal prove an almost insurmountable task for the Fire Nation fleet, which is why Admiral Zhao has devised his own clever way to defeat the waterbenders. Using schematics he picked up in Omashu, plans which were ironically created in part by Sokka, he built his own war balloon to sneak in past enemy lines in the search for the ocean and moon spirits. It just so happens that the night of their attack is the night of the ice moon, in which the barrier between our realm and the spirit realm is thinnest. Ancient legend states that during the night, the ocean spirit and moon spirit turn into mortal forms to experience what it's like to be alive. It is said that the lives of the waterbenders come from the ocean, and that their powers come from the moon. These two are linked, just like how the moon controls the push and pull of the ocean through the tides. If Zhao can find and kill the spirit of the moon, he can stop the waterbenders from using their power and easily take over the city. Meanwhile, Zuko has broken into Agna Kalal by using using his fire breath to break into the sewers. This is a trick he learned from Uncle Iroh, who got the nickname Dragon of the West from this power. The Battle of the City is honestly one of the most effects-filled battles I've seen in a long time, especially for a television show, and no wonder the budget was a whopping $120 million, which is actually $30 million less than the 2010 version. Katara's effort to prove herself sees her persuading Master Paku to let her and the women fight. It's been part of their culture that women are forbidden from fighting, but if they're going to win, they're going to have to. Change and transformation are two of the core tenets of waterbending, and Master Paku has lost sight of this, something he'll later apologize to Katara for. Change is the key to new life. Sokka is also tasked with protecting Princess Yue, and was it just me, but judging by how bad he is with women, he sure does well for himself. To save poor Momo, who is crushed by some falling debris, Yue brings them to the Spirit Oasis, the most sacred site in the north. It's here where the princess was brought as a child when she was sick and saved by the spiritual energy of the moon. Ever since then, she's been able to enter the spirit realm in her dreams. This is how Sokka saw her in fox form while entering the spirit realm in episode 5. Meanwhile, Zhao and his crew search for the ocean and moon spirits, finding that they've manifested into the form of black and white koi. The two symbolize 
yin and yang, the push and pull of the ocean between Earth and Moon. If the Moon Spirit is killed, it will put the world off balance and descend it into chaos. But Zhao doesn't care and holds the fish hostage, threatening to kill it should anyone make a move. It's Iroh who commits treason and blasts Zhao, but Zhao is too quick and stabs the fish, killing it. The Moon disappears and the waterbenders lose their power, making them defenseless against the onslaught of the Fire Nation. This is where Aang must make his biggest decision yet. There is a way to save the city, but it involves sacrificing himself. In Episode 2, Avatar Kyoshi teaches Aang about the Avatar State, which is... The combination of all your past lives focusing their energy through you. We got a glimpse of this when Kyoshi took over Aang's body and defeated the Fire Nation soldiers using a combination of all four elements. Honestly, this fight scene was my favorite in the entire season. Desperate Aang goes into the Avatar state and fuses with the Ocean Spirit, and the two form Koizilla, the physical manifestation of the Ocean's Wrath. Its partner has just been killed and it is pissed, so it proceeds to decimate the Fire Nation fleet. By fusing with the spirit, Aang has essentially forfeited his life to it, creating a vengeful spirit condemned to roam the planet looking for its lost love that isn't there. In the chaos, Zuko confronts Zhao and the two battle it out, with Zuko ultimately getting the upper hand. Zhao divulges that he had been secretly working with Azula this whole time, and that Fire Lord Ozai's plan is to have Azula take over the throne and not him. Is Zhao lying or is what he's saying true? Knowing how the Fire Lord has pitted his children against each each other and the complete disregard and lack of care he has for any of them, it's totally possible. Even with all this rage inside him, Suko doesn't have it in him to kill Zhao, just like he didn't have it in him to hurt his father. There is still a bit of compassion buried within him. Zhao capitalizes on this and is about to attack the prince when Iroh gives him the killing blow. With the Ocean Spirit making quick work of the fleet, this is where Princess Yue comes in. She freezes Sokka in place so he can't stop her from the greatest sacrifice of all. When her life was saved by the Moon Spirit as a child, a part of that spirit resided in her, hence the white hair. So she gives this part up to revive the Moon Spirit, but in so doing, loses her life. The moon reappears and the ocean spirit sees its long lost love and lets go of Aang to be with her. If there was any doubt that Avatar had returned, surely after this battle those doubts will be quashed as Aang emerges from the water victorious. The aftermath of the battle is not without its losses. Many in the tribe, including Han, one of the tribe's fiercest soldiers, is slain, and Sokka laments that he wasn't there to be a warrior. His job in protecting the princess turned out to be one of the most important of all, with Chief Arnuk teaching Teaching him, you don't have to be a warrior to be a hero. Katara, meanwhile, has proven herself to be a warrior, with Master Paku even offering her the job of teaching the new generation of waterbenders. One she turns down as she'll be accompanying Aang on the next leg of their journey. She's given a vial of spirit water, which in the world of Avatar is water infused with spiritual energy that gives it healing properties. No doubt a gift that will come in handy in their journey ahead. I loved how it's Katara, a girl who once dwelled on the past, is now the one to tell Aang not to focus on it as he sees the destruction he caused. And so stop worrying about the past and start thinking about what you still have to do. With Katara planning to teach Aang waterbending, the show looks like it's going to head back to Omashu for earthbending. But as we'll soon find out, the attack on Agna Kala was merely a distraction so that Azula's forces could take it over. Now only the Earth City of Basing Se stands between the Fire Nation and its complete domination of the Earth Kingdom. With his attempt at capturing the Avatar unsuccessful, Zuko feels lost, unsure of where to go and what to do. Zuko still can't go home and Iroh killed an admiral. It'll be interesting to see what happens to them. The Fire Lord, upon learning that his son might have been killed in the battle, doesn't seem to care. Sometimes you have to sacrifice the weak to keep yourself strong. The season ends with this celestial moon device, which was created to anticipate the next arrival of Sojin's comet. Its arrival is due soon, which would see the power of the firebenders increase dramatically, which may be the push they need to wipe out the other nations entirely. The question is, can Aang learn the necessary skills and time to defeat the Fire Lord and bring balance back to the world? We'll just have to wait until season two for answers. But what did you think of Netflix's Avatar? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember... My